Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Before I proceed I would like to thank uh, uh, permission given by Dr. Vinay Kumar, the first author of Robinson Cotran, Pathologic Basis of Disease and his unstinted support towards this endeavor. The first thing we would look at uh, in uh, this session would be normal skin histology followed by precursor lesion for squamous cell carcinoma, the epidemiology risk factors, etiopathogenesis, morphology, clinical features of both squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. So, this is a section of the normal skin. Now, the normal skin has the epidermis on top and the dermis below and lowermost is the fat or adipose tissue lobules with septa which is known as subcutis. This is a microphotograph of epidermis. So, this epidermis has a basal layer which has smaller cells and subsequently the uh, stratum spinosum, the stratum granulari and the stratum corneum. Stratum corneum has uh, your uh, uh, keratin present as a parallel layers and within these there can be some Langerhans cells also, then occasional uh, melanin uh, containing uh, your melanocyte is noted or a nevus cell is noted within the basal layer, below that is the dermis. Now, the uh, epidermis projects into the dermis as reti and the space between two retis is known as papillary dermis and just below the reti also papillary dermis, below that is the reticular dermis. So, this papillary dermis has blood vessels and the papillary as well as the reticular dermis have extensions of the uh, various adnexal structures. Now, this is the histopathological picture of the same that is the epidermis specifically can make out from top to bottom the stratum corneum followed by the stratum granulari, this is the stratum spinosum and lowermost is the basal layer and in between the reti is the papillary dermis as noted here and here as well as here. The first condition which we will be seeing now is actinic keratosis. Actinic as the name suggests it is uh, nothing but damage done due to radiant energy of the sun specifically ultraviolet rays. Keratosis means an increased layer of stratum corneum. So, this is keratinization is more in these cases that is why this condition is known as actinic keratosis basically damage to the skin which occurs due to UV rays uh, especially in the exposed parts of the skin and which is seen morphologically or clinically as multiple layers of keratin or as thickened keratin. So, how does it present? Presence in sun damaged skin with the predilection seen for light colored individuals or uh, light skinned people and uh, the initial uh, genetic abnormality noted in these conditions is p53 mutation. So, other factors may also be responsible for some people and these include uh, ionizing radiation exposure as well as exposure to arsenicals and industrial hydrocarbons. Now, the importance of uh, knowing about this condition that is actinic keratosis is that some of these uh, the uh, dysplasia progresses from mild to severe to involve the full thickness as well as proceed to invasive malignancy. Usually, it is uh, less than 1 centimeter in diameter is uh, tan brown to red colored and sometimes even skin colored. The surface of this is rough and like sandpaper, but at times excessive amount of keratin can accumulate on the surface subsequently giving rise to an elevation on the surface uh, looking similar to a horn and this is known as keratin horn. So, it affects the sun exposed sites as I mentioned earlier specifically the face, the arms and hands especially the dorsal aspect. It can affect the lips also wherein it is known as actinic chelitis. So, microscopically you will see a markedly thickened stratum corneum that is known as hyperkeratotic with maintenance of the nuclei within the stratum corneum. So, stratum corneum is hyperkeratotic and parakeratotic and because of which it is markedly thickened. Now, the rest of the epidermis shows a basal cell either hyperplasia or the skin uh, uh, is atrophic that is there is thinning of the uh, stratum spinosum and uh, a few uh, 
Atypical cells may be seen initially it is restricted to the basal cell layer where nuclei are atypical, enlarged, hyperchromatic etcetera and later on it progresses to involve the full thickness. Now besides uh, A type PR, there can be also abnormal keratinization within single cells in any of the layers of the epidermis which I had already mentioned. So, this is known as dyskeratosis, but there is always uh, preservation of the intercellular ridges till it becomes an invasive malignancy and uh, this condition will help in differentiating uh, uh, actinic keratosis from basal cell carcinoma where there is an absence of intercellular ridges. In the dermis there is a specific change which is again secondary to the uh, sun damage uh, seen in these conditions and this is the fibroblasts uh, which are uh, damaged will uh, produce an abnormal kind of elastin and that is blue gray in color and thick and this is deposited in the papillary dermis as seen in the picture. So, this condition is known as papillary dermal elastosis. So, how do these lesions progress? Some of them are stable, 5 percent of them will regress and some of them can undergo malignant transformation, but most of the time it is uh, removed, the lesion is removed either by curettage or by freezing or excision of the lesion. Uh, late another drug has been found uh, that is a local application of imicumod has been successful. Uh, mainly because it uh, activates the toll like receptor and thereby activates the cutaneous innate immunity and this innate immunity is responsible for removal of the atypical cells or uh, the pre malignant uh, cells from this area and therefore, 50 percent of these conditions when treated with the local application of imicomod have shown regression which is a very positive aspect. We move on to the next condition that is squamous cell carcinoma. Now, the pathogenesis of it is uh, uh, mostly similar to actinic keratosis and that is UV light exposure. Uh, DNA damage specifically occurs in these conditions and uh, this is seen more often in xeroderma pigmentosum. Defect in skin immunity is also noted that is the innate immunity that is cutaneous innate immunity though it is a temporary defect, but this much is enough to cause uh, uh, malignant transformation by causing mutation of abnormal uh, cells. Human papilloma virus, what role does it play here? Susceptibility to human papilloma virus 5 and 8 is seen in chronic immunosuppression and susceptible inherited diseases like epidermal dysplasia verusiformis with these tumors. That is patients uh, with chronic immunosuppression or epidermal dysplasia verusiformis and other susceptible inherited disorders having squamous cell carcinoma, uh, the HPV infection is thought to be responsible. Besides that industrial carcinogens like TARS, then chronic skin conditions like ulcers, scars, uh, sinuses of chronic osteomyelitis which are non-healing, then ionizing radiation, ingestion of arsenical specifically for uh, oral as well as tobacco and betel nut chewing are also thought to be responsible for squamous cell carcinoma. So, what happens in this uh, condition? So, this here I have depicted a uh, cell and this is the nucleus with your uh, chromosomes within. So, sunlight uh, causes uh, DNA damage within the skin and reduced innate immunity which is temporary as I have already mentioned. So, whenever UV rays come on to the such a damaged uh, cell where there is DNA damage, the checkpoint kinases ATM and ATR uh, normally will cause an increased P53 expression and stability of this P53, this in turn causes the cell to be arrested in G1 of this phase uh, in uh, cell cycle and there it will under either undergo repair or if the uh, cell cannot repair that nucleus, nuclear damage or DNA damage, then it undergoes death or apoptosis. But when uh, this P53 is abnormal, in that case it is mostly because of pyrimidin dimer mutations, then this never occurs and the abnormal uh, cell will go on proliferating because there is no check to that cell. Uh, this uh, is most often seen in uh, xeroderma pigmentosum, which is an autosomal recessive disorder with an abnormality in 9q22. Uh, that is your nucleotide excision repair pathway mutations is seen and pyrimidine dimers will not be repaired adequately or there is an abnormal repair of pyrimidine dimers in these conditions. 
other uh, uh, mutations involve uh, notch as well as RAS signaling pathway and all these together are known as driver mutations meaning they are the initial mutations which drive the process onwards. So, morphologically initially it starts as a carcinoma in situ where you get well defined sharp borders and red scaly plaques. Later on it becomes invasive uh, wherein it becomes nodular because the infiltration is below and there may or may not be keratin scale on top and it may ulcerate. Microscopically carcinoma in situ uh, is uh, seen to involve full thickness of the epidermis and you get uh, uh, your varying degrees of uh, atypia of the epidermis that is an isonucleosis may be there, then your uh, uh, polarity may be lost, atypical mitosis may be there in all the layers or some of the layers as well as dyskeratosis will be seen. Whereas, in invasive squamous cell carcinoma, it invades through the uh, basement membrane into the underlying stroma. Now, this invasive squamous cell carcinoma can be of different types depending on the differentiation and uh, keratinization seen. So, accordingly we have well differentiated, then we have moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated malignancies. Uh, the uh, cells can also sometimes go in for varying degrees of anaplasia. So, this is a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma microscopic picture you can make out keratin pearls within it and the cell nests which have uh, polygonal cells and very well defined cells and a proper orderly arrangement is noted. Now, this is another example high power view of the same and you can make out individual cell keratinization or dyskeratosis, but most of the cells look keratinized within the cell nest. So, at the periphery are the more uh, undifferentiated cells or less differentiated cells and towards the center are the more differentiated cells. Subsequently, you can even get keratin pearls within them. Now, uh, there are other types also that is moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated. In moderately differentiated you may see keratin for pearls and dyskeratosis, but it is not as much as seen in well differentiated. The other end of the spectrum is a poorly differentiated malignancy where there is a marked pleomorphism and uh, occasional dyskeratosis may be, but no keratinization as such in the form of keratin pearls etcetera and uh, pleomorphism is also uh, more. Now, this picture uh, shows uh, uh, no differentiation as such, no maturation rather. Now, in such cases what we do is uh, we uh, give a definitive diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma based on immunohistochemistry. So, we do markers which are specific for squamous cells that is P 63, P 40 as well as pan cytokeratin panel. Now, how does this progress? The progression uh, depends on how big the tumor is and how much it has invaded uh, as well as the staging. Most of the tumors because they are clinically uh, manifested early, so they are detected early and therefore, uh, they are resected while small. The large ones may invade the subcutis, 5 percent of them will undergo metastasis to the regional lymph nodes, this is an example of that. Now, therapy of these cases include wide excision, radiation as well as immunotherapy. Prognostic factors are uh, quite a few. Uh, location wise high risk anatomic sites include uh, the scalp, the nose, the lip, the eyes, eyelids specifically etcetera. Then uh, grossly if the diameter is more than 2 centimeters or depth of invasion uh, is uh, greater than 2 millimeters microscopically the grade uh, specifically the poorly differentiated uh, squamous cell carcinomas have uh, worse prognosis. Then presence of invasion lymphovascular perineural, perineural if it is more than 0.1 millimeter. Uh, then deep invasion, also association with scars, uh, then uh, with the immunosuppression as well as recurrent tumors have worse prognosis. Staging is uh, done by two methods that is uh, the AJCC 8th edition is followed by some as well as the Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, staging system is also followed. Therapy as I have already mentioned, uh, it is usually excision uh, which is done, it can be uh, um, specifically uh, the most type of excision or uh, more wide excision if the tumors are bigger. Then curettage, cryotherapy as well as radiation therapy and immunotherapy have all been utilized depending upon the stage and the type of involvement as well as the location. The next tumor which we will be dealing with is basal cell carcinoma. 
Now, this is the uh, most common uh, type of uh, malignancy involving the skin and uh, most often seen in the elderly. It, in USA, it accounts to about 1 million per year. It is a slow growing, rarely metastasizing tumor. 0.5 percent of them may show uh, local infiltration, actually less than 0.5 percent may show local infiltration and cause disfigurement of uh, that area resected early and it is not seen in mucosa. It occurs in uh, lightly pigmented uh, people uh, specifically as I said earlier in elderly, sun exposed locations similar to uh, the um, uh, once for squamous cell carcinoma are involved, but here more often uh, one particular uh, location is has been uh, depicted to be uh, affected and this is a line drawn on from the angle of the mouth to the ear that is to the pinna. So, region above that is thought to be affected more often. Etiology includes besides sun exposure, immunosuppression as well as DNA repair disorder that is xeroderma pigmentosum. Uh, whenever uh, pathogenesis of any disorder is studied, um, it is uh, found to be uh, effective in uh, finding out uh, uh, all the genetic mutations associated uh, with uh, inherited disorder which has this uh, particular tumor. So, in this case, in case of basal cell carcinoma, it is a neoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome also known as Gaulin syndrome or basal cell nevus syndrome. Now, this is an autosomal dominant disorder and it has multiple basal cell carcinoma presenting in a very young person that is below 20 years of age associated with basal cell carcinoma or other tumors uh, including medulloblastoma, then in females ovarian fibromas along with that odontogenic keratosis and pits in palms and soles as well as developmental abnormalities. So, what happens in this tumor? Now, in this tumor uh, it is thought to be the PTCH tumor suppressor gene. So, uh, in this condition when UV rays uh, cause DNA damage, if there is a mutated PTCH in a single allele, the DNA damage causes the second PTCH allele inactivation. So, basically the entire PTCH uh, uh, genome is abnormal. So, what is the role of PTCH in uh, uh, your neuroid basal cell carcinoma syndrome? We will have a brief uh, look at the pathogenesis in this. In normal individuals, PTCH exists as a transmembrane protein bound to another protein known as SMO, start for smoothen. Now, when uh, the uh, uh, sonic hedgehog complex binds to that, what happens is this dissociates that is SMO will dissociate and it will start a signal transduction to a transcription factor GLI1 which in turn causes proliferation because of gene expression. Now, when in basal cell carcinoma it is mutated the PTCH is mutated thereby it cannot bind to your SMO at all. Therefore, it is constantly giving signals to the genome to start gene expression as well as proliferation. So, there is ligand independent signal transduction in case of a mutated PTCH and that is what happens in that. So, it can also occur in sporadic basal cell carcinoma. Then uh, sometimes uh, besides PTCH other hedgehog pathway activating mutations have also been noted. So, grossly in early cases it is a pearly papule as seen in the picture and uh, numerous blood vessels are seen on the surface and it is quite shiny. These blood vessels are uh, because of uh, ectatic or dilated vessels just below the um, um, epithelium uh, within the tumor and this is known as stelangiectasia. Now, in superficial uh, basal cell carcinoma, these are red pigmented papules can also be seen. Now, for this condition there is a differential diagnosis of melanoma. Now, later on these will ulcerate with rolled out borders and in some cases these ulcers may invade deep into the bone especially if there is not much subcutaneous fat like for example, in the scalp etcetera and in such cases it is known as rodent ulcer because it is burrowing inside. 
microscopically a very characteristic picture is noted in basal cell carcinoma. So, it originates from the basal layer of the epidermis or from the hair follicle epithelium and progresses to invade deep inside. Now, there are two types of growth that is multifocal multiple foci seen in uh, uh, a tumor or it could be nodular. Now, multifocal example is superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma, nodular it will be seen as these individual nests of cells which extend in the dermis uh, and in case of deeply invasive it will extend into the subcutis also. Peritumorally the uh, stroma will retract from the tumor. So, this is known as stromal clefts. The stroma around this is uh, typically myxoid and this has a few fibroblasts as well as lymphocytes. So, peritumoral uh, um, a picture is also very important in differentiating from other conditions like trichoepithelioma which look exactly similar to basal cell carcinoma on microscopy. So, the stromal clefts is what we look for whenever we see this basaloid kind of nest. The clefting of the stroma away from the tumor islands and this stroma is myxoid or pale blue in color has lymphocytes and fibroblasts. Now, how do these tumor cell nests look? Now, the cell nest at the periphery of the cell there is a radial arrangement of the uh, malignant cells and that is known as palisading meaning looking like pales in the fence when we put these pales how it looks similar appearance it has at the periphery of the tumor cell nest or tumor islands and in the center it is a haphazard arrangement like garden party. So, these cells are typically basophilic with the scant cytoplasm and uh, uh, vesicular to hyperchromatic nuclei. Sometimes these cells can have melanin also. Histological variants uh, numerous are there, the most important ones are nodular, superficial spreading or superficial and pigmented. Immunohistochemistry includes uh, P63 and pancytokeratin. So, the prognostic factors uh, for uh, this basal cell carcinoma includes uh, similar to squamous cell carcinoma, the location, the histological type along with that the size, the margins and the invasion depth as well as lymphovascular and perineural invasion. Association with immunosuppression, prior therapy with radiation or uh, PUA for uh, any other condition. Then therapy for these include uh, similar to squamous cell carcinoma that is surgery, uh, most micrographic surgery is often done Then curettage, radiation and uh, other therapies are being used now which are still under clinical trials. So, to summarize we learnt about uh, uh, two most important things that is squamous cell carcinoma as well as basal cell carcinoma. Besides that we also learnt about a precursor lesion which is actinic keratosis which occurs in sun exposed sites and it is very small and this is the earliest uh, possible effect of UV damage on the skin and shows basal layer uh, uh, atypia with along with uh, abnormal uh, elastin deposition in the papillary dermis. Whereas, in squamous cell carcinoma occurs in the older individuals individuals sun exposure and the second most common malignancy noted in the skin. Uh, UV light induced DNA damage is a primary cause. The initial event is P53 mutation, later on Keras and notch abnormalities have also been detected. Morphologically early cases occur as scaly plaques or papules, later these become nodules and then may ulcerate. Microscopically you get varying a degree of differentiation from well differentiated to poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma accordingly they are graded and keratinization has to be noted. Prognosis depends on size, the location, the invasion, the grade, the stage, the recurrence as well as association with scars etcetera and immunosuppression. Basal cell carcinoma uh, to summarize what we learnt about it, it is the most common skin tumor, it is again associated like squamous cell carcinoma with UV exposure, it is a slow growing and locally aggressive malignancy. Hedgehog signaling pathway is responsible here that is PTCH inactivation specifically. Head is the common location and it presents as pearly papules which later on ulcerate with indurated margins. Microscopically you get basaloid cellness which are uh, basophilic in color and show peripheral palisading and central haphazard arrangement. Peritumoral clefting is there of the stroma which is myxoid and uh, prognosis wise it depends on histological types, 
then the type of invasion seen and whether there is invasion uh, that is lymphovascular perineural and the margins, the size, the location as well as association. So, with that we conclude this session on tumors of the skin specifically squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma and the precursor lesion actinic keratosis. Thank you for a patient hearing. Thank you so much. Have a good day.